believe this is my fourth and final video on proving trig identities in which we're going to confront a couple of proofs in which we need to use common denominators and lots of algebra, okay? So, let's go ahead and take a look at letter A up here on the top left. It says, prove the tangent of x plus cotangent of x equals the product of secant of x and cosecant of x. Uh, one very big reason why I wanted to do this example in this video is because, you know, you've got a sum on one side, or a difference, but in this case a sum, and a product on the other. And one of the big quarrels we have is when we work on problems such as these, uh, is which side should we work on, the left side or the right side? Well, typically the more complicated side. What I'm going to tell us it is always usually a better uh, better task or easier done, more easily done if you work on the side that has a sum or a difference. Okay, so that being said, we're actually going to work with tangent of x plus cotangent of x. We need to prove that it's the same thing as secant of x times cosecant of x. And so I look at these and I say, okay, well, hold on a second here. Tangent of x plus cotangent of x, there's uh, not much I can do with this. We could try to do some trig substitutions. If I'm stuck already, we could rewrite this in terms of sines and cosines. So tangent of x, I'm going to leave the x's out, but recall that tangent is the same thing as sine over cosine, and that cotangent is the same thing as cosine over sine. Okay, so so far we've rewritten the left hand side to look like this. Um, at this point, I kind of want to bring up or at least review how one uh, adds or subtracts two fractions, you know, get a common denominator. But uh, in this instance, if we had like in general a over b plus or minus c over d, we'd say, well, then the common denominator would just be the product of these two numbers here if they don't have any common factors already and if they're not the same number. So for example, you know, bd would be our common denominator. So we'd, over here, we'd have to take this times d on top and bottom. And over here, we'd have to take this times b on top and bottom. And we'd end up with this expression. We'd say all over bd all over BD here. Whoa, that got ugly. We'd say we'd have AD on top over here. We say AD plus or minus, which is just this right here, uh, BC. I'm going to put it in alphabetical. But what I want you to notice is this would be the product of the two denominators that you had originally, as well as this. We say A times D, which really A times D, D was just this guy's denominator down here. And we say, well, C times B, the original C times this B here. Well, B was just this one's denominator down here. So it's just kind of this way of uh, adding and subtracting fractions very quickly. So in this instance, we'd say, well, we have sine over cosine plus cosine over sine. Well, then the common denominator denominator is going to be this. We'd say just cosine, cosine times sine, okay? And we get this because we'd take this fraction up here times sine on top and bottom, sine, sine. Over here we'd take this times cosine and cosine top and bottom, but we get sine over cosine on the bottom, uh, sine times cosine on the bottom. We get sine squared on the left, so we'd say sine squared plus now our cosine squared. Okay, so the nice thing about this, you know, you think about, well, what could we do at this point? Well, whenever you see a sine squared or a cosine squared, you might be thinking, well, hey, can I do some Pythagorean substitutions? And actually, we can here. Recall that sine squared plus cosine squared, get used to this, but is one. It equals one. So the nice thing is these cancel out. I just get one. So now this entire left-hand expression becomes one over cosine times the sine. Okay, so at this point, you know, I say, well, here's what I've gotten on the left-hand side. Maybe I'm stuck on the left-hand side. Another good reason why this is a great example of something to work on is because maybe we can diverge for just a moment and work on the right-hand side. Well, if I had been working with the right-hand side, we could say secant is 1 over cosine. Uh, and we say cosecant is 1 over sine. But what I want you to see is, well, hey, multiplying these together, we would necessarily get this right here. And this was our right-hand side. So we'd say, okay, well, the left-hand side could be split apart and written as uh, one over one over cosine times one over sine. But essentially, sometimes you just have to work with both sides to get this bridge built. Okay, so we say uh, QED. That's what we wanted to show. Uh, but this was a good example for three reasons. One, we had to find a common denominator with uh, trigonometric uh, functions. Two, we had a Pythagorean identity. Whenever you see sine squared plus cosine squared, it's one. And three, you know, we took a moment to stop and go work on the other side for a minute. And we were able to turn the right side into what we had been working on on the left-hand side, the progress we had made there. Okay, so the last example here we'll take a look at, and this one is uh, quite a bit of algebra, but we say, look, we have to uh, prove that sine over the quantity one plus cosine here uh, is the same thing as the quantity one plus cosine of alpha over sine, and this, this comes out to equal two cosecant of alpha, okay? So here's the deal, working with the left-hand side, because it's the more complicated of the two sides, we would have to find a common denominator here. And recall that this is our a little method here for finding the common denominator. So the common denominator, we say, is going to be this on the left-hand side. It's the product of the two existing denominators. So we'd have this. We'd have 1 plus cosine, not cosecant, cosine 
times sine. This is what we'd have in the basement. Up top we'd have, well now, sine times this sine would give us sine squared plus, this is our plus right here, plus. Now one plus cosine times one plus cosine. This is important, but that is one plus cosine the entire quantity squared. The reason why that's important is because this. Well, first of all, recall in algebra, if you had one plus cosine squared, this would not be equal to one squared plus cosine squared. You'd actually have to foil this sucker out. So you'd have to have one plus cosine times one plus cosine. So hey, you know, we'll get back to the proof here in a minute, but let's go ahead and do our algebra. If I were to foil this, I would get one plus cosine, plus cosine, plus two cosines, then total, plus cosine squared. So this entire top expression becomes this, sine squared, which is our original sine squared that we had here, plus now all of this, one plus two cosine, plus cosine squared, all over now we had this, one plus cosine times sine. Okay, so we are getting somewhere actually, believe it or not. Uh, a few things I want to point out, uh, start with this. I, I know that uh, sine squared plus cosine squared, hey, you know what, sine squared plus cosine squared, let me rewrite this in, in a little bit more uh, cosmetic way. We have one plus the two cosine plus sine squared plus cosine squared. I'll actually stick those right next to each other so you can see this a little bit more easily. One plus cosine times the sine here. Uh, but what I want to show you is this, the sine squared plus the cosine squared, remember those just equal one. That equals 1 right there. So we could substitute a 1 in for this expression here. So on top now we have this 1 plus 2 cosine squared plus 1. So in other words, 2 plus 2 cosine all over 1 plus cosine times the sine. Okay, so keeping in mind that we want to make this look like the right-hand side, which is 2 cosecant. Okay, maybe, maybe I say this. Hey, that's just to reiterate the fact that's the same thing as 2 times 1 over sine, or that's the same thing as 2 over, you know, sine, essentially. But we want to make it look like this. We want to make this look like this. And so, you know, I'm saying on the top, well, I notice I have a 2 up top. You know, how can I manipulate this? On the bottom, I need to somehow get rid of this 1 plus cosine to leave just but my sine, you know, behind. So here's what I can tell you. We're going to factor the top. We're going to get the GCF out of here. And the greatest common factor right now is 2. So I'd have 2 times the quantity 1 plus cosine. That would be the same thing as what we had. And on the bottom we have 1 plus cosine times sine. So the thing to mention here is this. The 1 plus cosines cancel out and I get left with this 2 sine on the bottom. Which is the same thing as what we wanted to show on the right. So here's our bridge here. We could say that's the same thing as 2 cosecant. And we can put the alpha back in there. So anyways, we were able to transform the left-hand side into the right-hand side. We needed to find common denominators. We need to know that process. We also need to know that sine squared plus cosine squared always is 1. It's always 1. Okay, very important. And also sometimes you just have to, you have to factor things out. So cheers.